Hi, this is Mr. Anger. We are going to look at pages 10 through 14. Hopefully you did well on the first checkup. And now we're going to dive into the second section here. And uh, looking first at page 10, I want to point out, uh, there's that pencil man. I forget what his name is, but he's uh, showing us things that will make us smart or reminders. Be sure to simplify within the parentheses first. Well, actually, there's a little lesson that uh, I like to give my students. That is, there's four steps to the order of operations. P, E, M, D, A, S. First thing is parentheses, okay? So anything within parentheses, you saw that before you do anything else in the whole long algebraic statement. E is exponents. That would be the same step as square roots, or if there's a, like a two or a three exponent next to a number, you solve that next. M, D, stands for multiplying and dividing. We do that in the same step and we have to go from left to right, okay? Let's go across the page, doing all the multiplication and division. Last thing is only addition and subtraction. So let's, the way we keep track of this is say, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So you picture some frumpy woman, you know, with a straw hat and uh, she's doing weird antics and uh, you just say, oh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Maybe you have an Aunt Sally, okay, and you can picture somebody different. All right, <clears throat> let's take a problem like this. So this is just numbers. We're going to follow the order of operations. And uh, I look at this and you might be tempted to say, oh, I know eight minus one is seven. Okay, that's the very last step we're gonna do. We have to start with the parentheses. And so when we do that, this becomes <clears throat> three, okay? But now notice three is right up against five. And that's another way of writing multiply. Now I'm going to bring the whole thing down because this is a good practice to get into. Don't try to do these in your head, even as a teacher. If I try to do this in my head, I get them wrong. I get one step wrong, the whole problem's wrong. So better to show your work, show all the steps. Be careful, okay? So I've proven now that 7 minus 4 is 3. Now notice the 3 is up against the 5. That gives me 15, okay? 15 plus 8 minus 1. Well, what's 15 plus 8? Again, we're going from left to right. So that would be 23. Then we do 23 minus 1, and I'll let you finish that one because that is actually one of your homework problems. Oh, look. Don't they? Don't this, this just makes you happy, doesn't it? Seeing fractions in algebra. Well, <clears throat> We're just applying the rule here. The rule is we do what's inside the parentheses first. Now, at least they were nice. They gave us a common denominator. So what is 7 eighths minus 3 eighths? Okay, we're gonna do that part first. So since the denominator is the same, we can just subtract, and that gives me 4 eighths, okay? And then we're gonna add 7 eighths plus 4 eighths. And now, the denominator is the same. We add the numerators and then reduce, okay? Because you're gonna end up with an improper fraction. I'm gonna let you do that, okay? Because that is, again, another homework problem there on page 10, 11, page 11, okay. I'm gonna jump ahead and quick cover something here on page 12. On page 12, <clears throat> they have us solving expressions where they give us the value of a letter. And so now we have what looks like a complicated algebraic expression and we're supposed to get an answer. Well, we first have to take each of these numbers and plug them in place of the variable, then follow the order of operations in order to solve it. Now I chose this one. This again is one of your homework problems because it's really kind of challenging. They have the square root sign, we call it the radical, over top of three letters and two of them have exponents. So here's a really good rule of thumb that'll help you doing these. Replace every letter with its own parentheses, okay, and make a template. So I'm gonna leave that, put a template for the A. This is gonna become B squared, and this is gonna become X squared, okay? So I just have these gaps. Now A is one, so I can plug that in. B is two, so I plug that in here, and it's gonna become two squared, 
All right, are you with me? X is 5. Now, all of this is under the radical. So the first thing I need to do is follow my order of operations. I can't really do the square root until I solve everything underneath. So the square root is actually like its own special parentheses. <laughs> Exciting, huh? All right, so what, let's do any, um, we have some exponents and then we'll do the multiplying. What is two squared? Four, five squared, 25, good. And then this is the hard part, times one. <whistles> okay, now we go from left to right, multiplying, four to the little, 100. Now remember, all of these steps, we should be keeping the radical over top. And so the last step is you say, well, what is the square root of 100, or what number times itself is 100? I'm not going to do the final answer for you, but uh, we've gone quite a ways to help you do problem number 20 on page 13. And then if you look at page 14, again, very similar. Some of these have addition in the middle of it. And uh, some of them, look at number 28. It says 3x, and then parentheses, to the third power. And x in this case is 2. Okay, so again, you have to look at the directions to see <clears throat> what, the, what values to plug in for, or what numbers to plug in, all right? So the instructions for this section, different from that, say that x is 2. So this time I'm going to replace the parentheses with a square bracket, and now I can plug in the 2, okay? Close that, raise it to the third power. So I'm asking what is 3 times 2? 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6, okay? And then we're going to take that to the third power, and what do you get? 18? No. Caught you. We don't multiply 6 times 3 to get the answer. We have to use 6 as a base three times. So 6 times 6, take that answer, times 6. Okay? So I'm going to let you finish that problem, but we took you pretty far, okay? in the order of operations and getting close to the answer. And uh, number, number 30 says 1 over x to the third power. Well, when you plug in x as 2, you have a fraction. So you're going to take that fraction times itself times itself. Okay? And again, I think you can, you can finish that one. Then you'll be up to the checkup. Okay? I would highly recommend you look over the checkup you know, before you start, don't, don't be studying the answer key for it. Just look at the problems and say, do I know how to do this? Am I confident I know what I'm doing? Do I know the answers to the complete, the statements? And study it before you get permission to actually do the checkup. And obviously make sure everything has been scored and corrected before you do the checkup there on page 14. All right, we need to talk after this in another video about positive and negative numbers. We'll come back on page 15 after you take your checkup.